Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this special Gettysburg College event. Today you're going to have the opportunity to learn more about our college's rigorous liberal arts and sciences education. Our academics in many ways serve as the bedrock for an exceptional interdisciplinary experience we provide in that our students' co-curricular and extracurricular activities build on this very foundation and in turn are deeply enhanced by it. Here at Gettysburg College, we offer a hands-on education that will expose you to the world. It will teach you how to think, how to marshal facts and evidence, and how to communicate effectively. It will broaden your intellectual understanding and enhance your capacities for empathy and action. This matters enormously for your own personal and professional development, but it also matters to a society in great need of the thinking and the talents that you possess and that we will help you cultivate here from your first day on campus to your graduation and beyond. Through an immersion in the arts, humanities, social sciences, and sciences, we will equip you with an orientation to make sense of and respond effectively to a world that has become ever more complex and interrelated. In short, the education we provide is a reverberation of President Lincoln's call to action, one that asks us to get involved and to make a difference. That's part of what makes this place so special. So you may wonder, how does Gettysburg do this? Well, I believe it can be summarized by who you will learn from and how you will learn as members of this community. Let me touch briefly on both, starting with who you will learn from. As contributing members of this distinctive institution, you will join a diverse and engaged student body. Our students come to us from across the country and around the world. Together, we celebrate and learn from our individual differences. We encourage constructive discourse. Your classmates will bring with them a variety of perspectives, beliefs, and experiences to each of your classes and to every interaction they have with you. This leads to collaborations and discoveries that can only be fully realized through an intentional liberal arts curriculum and an intellectual environment like the one we provide you here at Gettysburg. In a moment, you'll also hear from our panel of dedicated faculty. Our professors here at Gettysburg are deeply committed to teaching, advising, and mentoring you, but also to challenging you and inspiring you. This occurs within the classroom, to be sure, but also outside the classroom as well, through innovative student faculty research, through partnerships on scholarly publications and presentations, through our first year seminar program, about which you're gonna hear more in a moment, and the many other ways that we bring value and vibrancy to your education. In short, both your classmates and your professors will transform you in invaluable ways and provide you with a set of practical, real-world skills that you will need to launch a successful career and to lead a life of meaning, service, and consequence. Now, let's turn to how you will learn as a member of our community. As important as your education is, it is not alone enough to know how to truly make a difference out in the world. You need to know how to use that education. At Gettysburg College, we want you to graduate with more than a collection of experiences en route to a degree. We want you to graduate with a clarity and understanding of what you have learned here and who you have become here. This is what will prepare you to fight for causes that you believe in, both big and small. This is what will prepare you to translate your aspirations into action. Through the unique academic experiences we offer, you will come to recognize how best to use your education for the greater good on our campus, in your community, in your career, and within society. We likewise will provide you with opportunities to apply your education in concrete ways over your four years here so that when you're called on to lead, you're ready, willing, able, and confident. You simply will not find this kind of preparation anywhere else. It is an education of the mind, the hands, and the heart. Again, let me simply welcome you to today's virtual event. Please be sure to ask as many questions as you can so that you can really come to learn more about this remarkable community 
It's a wonderful community that we hope you will consider joining in the fall. Enjoy your day, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us at this um, admissions event um, on the part of Gettysburg College. Um, the format we're going to use for this event is that um, the four faculty members are going to briefly introduce ourselves to you, and then we're going to open this up to all of you for a Q&A. Um, so any questions you have for us, you can just type them in. Um, and we'll do our best effort to respond to those questions tonight. Um, so welcome again, and we look forward to interacting with you over the course of the next um, hour or so. Um, so I'll start out. I'm Carolyn Hartzell. I'm a professor in the political science department. I'm also the chair of the political science department. Um, in the political science department, I teach courses in um, mostly in international relations. And um, I'm also affiliated with the public policy program at Gettysburg College. I have taught at the college now for about 26 years. I think that's right. It might be 20, this might be my 27th year, actually. Um, and this was my very first job, and I am still here after all these years, which you should take as evidence of how much I really um, enjoy teaching at this institution. Um, I think each of us are going to say one thing we love about being at Gettysburg, and mine might sound a little odd, but here it goes. I have never been bored at Gettysburg College. Again, I've taught here for all these years, and I have had opportunities to teach all kinds of classes during that time, um, to engage with students in all kinds of interesting ways, um, including, for example, taking uh, students on a trip to Cuba, taking students on a trip to Nicaragua as part of one of my courses. Um, helping students start new clubs on campus. So this is definitely a place where if you can think of um, an adventure, a learning adventure, an interactive adventure, an intellectual engagement of any type, you will find people willing to join you in that journey, including faculty members. Um, so I'm going to turn this over now, and I guess we'll mostly maybe do this in alphabetical order. So Yosef, how about you go next? Sounds good. Hi, everybody. My name is Josef Brandauer. I'm an associate professor in our health sciences department, and I'll talk to you more about what we do in our health sciences department. I am also a health professions advisor at Gettysburg College, um, which means that if you have any questions about careers in the health professions, be it medical, nursing, school, public health, what have you, uh, we have a team of advisors advisors to specifically talk you to through your career options. And so if you have any questions about that, please feel free to address those questions to me. Uh, I am in year lucky 13 in my career at Gettysburg College. Uh, likewise, I have not had a lot of days where I was bored. Uh, it's always something to learn. Favorite thing about Gettysburg, um, the people that are here for sure, and my colleagues, the colleagues that I get to work with at Gettysburg, they they push me to be better at my job. And that translates into the student experience. And that makes it a an environment where we sort of, we definitely have this uniform goal of making sure that our students get what they need in order to have an optimal learning experience and being part of an a group of people like that and of an organization like that is very rewarding if, if this is what you chose for your career. So I think it's a very positive place for a student to receive an education in the liberal arts and sciences. And as I often say, I love my job. So welcome. I uh, look forward to engaging with you more. I'm going to turn it over to Heather. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. So I'm Heather Odell Dusso. I'm an associate professor in the management department and also the department chair. I came here the same year Yosef did. So we've been working together the past 12 years. And I never thought about Lucky 13 um, <laughs> this year. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I will be talking and um, able to answer any questions about the management department and our offerings in business management and organizations. Happy to answer any questions. And my favorite thing, I think, is certainly everything that Caroline, Carolyn and um, Yosef have mentioned, but I think my favorite thing has been the opportunity to 
get students when they get here in their first year and they start taking courses and then watching how much they're growing and learning and maturing over those four years. And then when they graduate, you know, at the end of their senior year and getting to meet those families and, you know, it, it, it's, it really is a rewarding experience and something that I absolutely adore being able to see how much students are just learning and growing over the course of four years here. I guess I could turn it over to McKinley now. All right, awesome. So um, good evening, everyone. My name is McKinley Melton. I am an associate professor of English and uh, for Kama Studies. I am in the English department where I teach a variety of courses in African-American literature and culture, uh, primarily 20th century, but then even uh, some work into the contemporary moment. And I'm certainly happy to talk to you all about um, any of that because I love talking about my classes and I love talking about the kind of work that I get to do. Um, and so I'll certainly be happy to talk with you all about that uh, throughout the Q&A. In terms of what I would say I love most about Gettysburg, I would say it's very similar to Heather um, in that I really enjoy the way I get to know my students and I get to kind of grow alongside those students throughout their four years here. The way that I, I see the difference between the first year and their senior year but also as they move throughout their lives as alums, I often hear from students, you know, uh, when they're two, three, four years out, sometimes it's a nice email, sometimes we become Facebook friends, um, but I get to see the, the arc of their lives. Um, and I think that that is really facilitated by being at a place like Gettysburg that is really intentional about the way that we create community. We're really intentional about how we foster interaction, not only between faculty and students, but also between students themselves. And so it's the idea that we get to all share space in a community that's really not terribly large, um, helps to make that possible, but it's also made possible by the very intentional ways that we think about how we all share space together, how we all can work alongside one another, um, and how we can facilitate one another's growth and development. And so I think that that atmosphere here is what makes it possible for us to develop the kinds of attachments and to have the opportunity to bear witness in the ways that we are to all the amazing things that our students do year after year. Um, thank you, um, everyone, for those um, introductions. And so we look forward to your questions. Um, I think we see, I see some first initial questions here. Um, and maybe, Yosef, you could take at least um, part of the, the very first one there because it is STEM related. Absolutely. So there's some questions about uh, getting degrees in computer science and would like to know more about our computer science <laughs> department. And I am part of the science faculty at, at Gettysburg College. So I'm a, I'm a trained physiologist. So I study human biology and we'll talk about this more later, but we are part of a very tight knit group of faculty and students that work really closely together, faculty for sure, to provide engaging experiences to our students. And the computer science department is a very important component of, of that group. And so when students ask me about any sciences, the science departments um, where students eventually either go into professional, technical, very complex careers when it comes to decision-making technically very challenging careers or careers where they're going to go on to graduate school, a lot of times the question is what experience am I as a student um, going to have? And my answer is it's gonna be a very engaged and hands-on experience that you have. So, so in the computer sciences department, the focus is that you have interaction with your course instructors, that you have that in small classrooms where there is an opportunity for a productive back and forth, and that you have opportunities to practice your skills, to show your metal, to get trained, to acquire some skills, and to show off your chops outside of the classroom as well. 
So the way that looks like at Gettysburg is that we have an incredibly active summer research program as an example of what we do, where every summer between nowadays 50 and 60 students, which is a substantial number given that we're not a very large institution. Uh, so 50 to 60 students stay on campus and do a um, paid research internship uh, on campus for eight to 10 weeks. And so these are the interactions where you are growing as a person, but you're also growing as a scientist. So whether it's a coding project that you have or anything else that you do, not only do you work in your technical expertise, but you also live with other science students and they may be computer science students, but they may not be. And so explaining your expertise to curious individuals from other disciplines and communicating your hypotheses, that's what we're all about and doing that well. So again, I would say this is an engaged, integrative science and research experience where you can definitely tell I am getting a liberal, liberal arts and sciences education. And we think about these things very comprehensively, very enthusiastically, as you can probably tell. So if you have any follow-up questions, let me know. Uh, if there's any specific questions about the computer science program, I will get you in touch with the right person. The contact information and everybody else's you'll see at the end. Great, thank you. I think the next question in the queue is one about the political science department. So I will happily take that. Um, and then I think the following one, maybe Heather is on business internships. So you could take the one after that and I haven't looked further, but um, the question here is what about the political science department sets Gettysburg apart from similar um, size liberal arts colleges? That's a great question. Um, obviously politics and government or political science is a is a common major at many institutions, liberal arts institutions. Um, and what we do have things that set us apart here at Gettysburg College. One is our proximity to Washington, D.C. Um, we're about 80 miles away, um, so it is possible to go back and forth, for example, in a day to events down in Washington, D.C. Um, and also just kind of to uh, I guess I think a lot of our students think about political science as a major given our proximity to Washington, D.C. A lot of our majors either um, get internships in the summer in Washington, D.C., or we have two programs for off-campus studies um, that are located in Washington, D.C., both of which have um, internship components to them. So a number of majors do a semester in Washington, D.C. with internships that way, and a very substantial number of our majors end up graduating and moving down to D.C. to work in some aspect of, if not politics directly, um, definitely related. Like I've had students go into the Department of Defense, students that have worked at NASA for a while, um, you know, so variations from their political science major. Um, we're also a mo uh, an hour away from Harrisburg, the state capital of Pennsylvania. So there are also opportunities for students to do internships and um, just work in Harrisburg as well. And then I think another important um, part here is um, that we have something called the Eisenhower Institute at the college, um, which brings either people up from D.C. or sends students down to D.C., connects them to lots of different types of public policy programs, including international public policy issues. Um, and runs a lot of programming all year long that a number of political science um, students, but also students from other majors. It's meant to really bring that interdisciplinary component that Professor Giuliano talked about um, into the public policy sphere as well. So, and I guess the last thing I'd finally say about our major is be we are the largest major at the college, so we have a very large number of alumni and a really, really good alumni network. And that's something that our students are really able to draw on and connect to. Just this week, for example, I have um, a student in my capstone seminar who said, who told me she's really interested in going to, into the field of international development. I said, oh, great. I've recently been in touch with a student who um, took a number of classes with me. He's working uh, at USAID right now. Let me connect you guys through an email. Um, and so he's going to provide her with, a, you know, career advice on how to get into the field of international development. So those alumni connections are really an important part of what we do as well. Um, Heather? 
Yeah, so kind of uh, stemming from what Carolyn was saying in terms of the connections with alums, I see a lot of students um, accessing internship opportunities uh, largely through their the alumni network. Our alums love to come back to Gettysburg College. They love to come and interact with students. They love to come into our classrooms and talk to students, do presentations about the work that they're doing. And that's a huge resource that I have observed in my years here at Gettysburg College that I haven't observed at other places where I have gone to school or taught. So that's a really strong alum network here that does allow for connections for internships and also jobs after graduation. In terms of internships, uh, students typically will take them in the summer where they can also take them do an internship over their Christmas break, um, sometimes even spring breaks. You know, internship experience, these kind of applied in the workplace experiences can range from maybe a single day kind of job shadowing opportunity to a semester long experience. We've even had students who are able to um, incorporate an internship while they're taking classes at Gettysburg College. And a lot of the internships are also eligible for course credit. Uh, within our department in particular, we um, require students to have what we refer to as our critical action learning component, where they have some kind of applied experience. And a lot of the students are using internships to kind of meet that criteria of a, an applied experience, but some of them are also doing it through their study abroad experiences. Some students are doing it through a community engagement project with the Center for Public Service here on campus. So students have to have some kind of applied experience that then when they get into their capstone, they draw on and analyze from a critical management perspective, critiquing that experience from um, beyond a traditional business focus on bottom line profits and employer productivity to really questioning you know, the, the status quo and really incorporating that liberal arts and science ideology into evaluating that experience and um, kind of identifying what are those underlying assumptions that create the business structures and management and organization structures that are often taken for granted and questioning those and identifying, you know, perhaps perhaps how they lead to inequities within organizations and within communities and within societies. So there's a lot of good internship experiences. Another thing I'll mention is the Center for Career Engagement here on campus has a, is a wonderful resource for students in helping you um, revise and work on kind of critiquing your um, resume, but also providing lots of direct opportunities with um, local and um, national, international companies to obtain those internship credits. So they're another resource that we work a lot with and we send students to, um, as well as the alums with more informal connections that we may be aware of. And, and kind of like what just, excuse me, Carolyn was just mentioning, there was a student of ours who was interested in doing an internship with AT&T. It's a company that um, several of our students have gone and worked at after graduation. And, you know, we just, we put him in touch with that former student who's at AT&T um, who was able to connect him with people to look at internships for um, over the, the um, winter break and perhaps even in the summer as well. So a lot of great opportunities um, with a wide range of organizations for students to get an internship. So I'm going to uh, dive in here. Um, we have a question uh, asking if we can talk a bit about the sort of guidance and support on selecting a major that a student can expect if they apply undecided. Um, so here's what I'll say. I personally love undecided students. I love, um, you know, it's great when a student comes in and they already have a sense of what they want to major in and they've started to kind of map out their plans um, at the very least for their first year or two. But I actually really love it when a student comes and they just say, I, I don't know what I, what I want to major in. I know I'm interested in these things. These are things that I was really good at in high school. These are areas that I was challenged in high school, but I kind of want to get stronger. And I'm just open to trying to figure out what that pathway is, right? So a few things that you all should know is about the way that we do advising here. First is that you come in and you are assigned a pre-major advisor, and then you get a second advisor, or I should say that you get a new advisor once you declare a major. So you may come in and as a first year student, you may have an advisor who happens to be in the field that you wish to be in, but it's entirely possible that you won't. 
And so I often, you know, as an English professor, I often meet students who are more science minded or they're more, you know, mathematically minded. Um, and I usually try my best to convince them to find a love for the humanities. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes not as much. Um, but ultimately, the goal is to help students uh, think through what they're passionate about, what they're interested in. We have a wide array of curricular requirements that uh, you know students call the gen eds, you know, your general education requirements. So as we help to help you to navigate the fulfillment of those requirements, you may end up taking a psychology class and opening up a world of possibility and interest in psychology that you never knew about. Or you may take a history course and then end up finding wow, I'm really interested in history and, and in the, the writing and the analysis of these various you know, historical figures and moments in ways that I never really thought that I was interested in before. And so part of that first year advising experience or that pre-major advising experience, because you don't, you're not required to declare a major until the spring of your sophomore year. So you can be undeclared and undecided really for your first three semesters here. Part of the process or part of that, um, part of what we do during that time period is to help you figure out what you're interested in, to help you figure out where your skill sets are, where your passions are, and to help you think through a course of study where you can build on the areas where you're already strong um, and develop in those areas where you find new interests that you didn't even know that you had. Um, the other thing that I will mention as we think about what it means to come to college, um, they come to Gettysburg without knowing exactly what your future path is going to be. A lot of times your advisors are actually set up with you as a result of your first year seminar. So for instance, I'm teaching a first year seminar on black superheroes in American popular culture. And I brought in a wide variety of students. A number of them are actually health science majors or they're planning for health science. I have several students who are interested in business. I have several students who are not um, who don't know yet, they're undecided, but they know that they have an interest in issues of race and justice, or they have an interest in comic books and media and popular culture. And so it brought a variety of students into this space, and I get to work as the advisor for most of them. And so some of them, you know, may end up declaring English majors if I have my way, um, but others I will happily help steer them toward the other paths to where they want to go. And so the way that you're going to come into contact with your first year advisor is often going to be someone who's teaching one of your classes, but it may not be the class that you chose because it's what you thought you were going to major in. And so there's a lot of opportunity there to meet with faculty outside of the department where you may end up spending the majority of your time and getting some insight, getting some advice and getting some direction into areas that you never even thought about exploring before you got here to Gettysburg. If, if I can piggyback onto that a little bit, um, the, I find that so fascinating to talk to my colleagues about the, our advising jobs because a lot of the students that I advise are students that come here because they want to be health professions or health sciences majors. And so uh, that gives me a chance to now plug the health sciences department a little bit. Um, so what we are is a human biology department. So we have a biology department that you would expect at any university or college. But in Gettysburg, we have decided that we also wanna have a focus specifically on human biology. And so, Several of you in the audience have been asking questions about this major. Um, this is a, a big draw to Gettysburg College for sure. So our students, they come to my office, they sit down, we introduce each other, and they oftentimes have a pretty formed uh, plan for their post-Gettysburg College career. I want to be a physician. I want to be a physical therapist. So my job is almost the opposite of what McKinley is saying. And that is, I am getting you to doubt yourself and question yourself whether that's the right career choice for you. And in that sense, I think we're doing the same thing, right? Is to introspect, to think about what your goals are, why your stated goals are what your stated goals are, and then provide people the guidance and the mentorship to answer those questions for themselves. And one of the ways we do that is, for instance, through the research experience that I have uh, mentioned before. If you think you want to be a scientist, you need to do some science while you're an undergraduate student, or at least it highly benefits you and your chances of getting into graduate school. 
And so we do our very best to provide students who want to do science an opportunity to do that in a faculty student uh, mentorship arrangement. Another thing that we are very good at at Gettysburg is to um, rely on our base of alumni and friends to the college in giving you access to externships, shadowing experiences and internships. So again, you've heard this before now, our Center for Career Engagement is doing a really fantastic job finding the alumni. You have already heard they're eager to help and mentor pre uh, former students, mentoring current students. And so we are doing a really nice job as far as not just telling you what these uh, professions entail, but also giving you some firsthand experience in the field, be that in public health, be that in pharmacology research, be that in medicine. And that's just my little corner of, of campus. Okay, we have a couple of questions on study abroad um, opportunities. So um, I might start with that and then I think McKinley, you might jump in as well. Um, if you have been looking at Gettysburg College, um, one of the things you might know about us is that study abroad is a huge component of um, kind of our character here at the college. Students are very much encouraged to study abroad. There's lots of support for studying abroad. We have, a you know, just so many different study abroad sites around the world. Some are linked to the study of foreign languages. So for example, if you major in French or if you major in Spanish you or German, for example, you are expected to study abroad and there are a number of sites you could do so. Some are related to your language levels at the time you study abroad. Um, but also, it, it's such a big part of the culture here that over 60% of our students study abroad. And these are not short-term study abroad, they're semester-long study abroad opportunities. Um, so we are ranked nationally um, in the top five liberal arts colleges in the country for our semester-long study abroad programs. Um, some students study abroad for more than one semester. So you might see a student study, for example, I'll just give an example of, of this. Um, I had a student study in Morocco for a semester and then her next semester she went to France because she was really interested in the uh, stream of women migrating from the Maghreb to France and wanted to study more on that as an issue and be able to use her French language skills as well, which is just pretty amazing and, and part of what we really aim for here is this very integrative experience. So she was using her interest in French language, she was using her um, interest in focusing on um, social, you know, civil society organizations that women had set up, for example, um, and incorporated that all into a pretty amazing research project for her globalization studies major. Um, so we very much support study abroad. We love in our classrooms to have students who have studied abroad and they bring a richness to our class discussions of all kinds of different topics reflecting on their study abroad experiences. Um, McKinley, do you wanna talk a little bit maybe about, there was a question about, can you do an internship or conduct research while studying abroad? Can I turn it over to you? Yeah, so um, again, I, I am a huge proponent of study abroad. Um, I'm often the, one of the first things that happens when I sit down with my advisees is I talk to them about what are their plans for uh, study abroad. And we start thinking about how to plan their courses around it. To just be perfectly frank and honest with you all, I had an amazing undergraduate experience. The one thing that I did not do was I did not study abroad. And I tell all of my students this, is that's literally the one regret that I have for my own undergrad experience. And so a little bit of projection that I put that onto uh, students and try to encourage them to really maximize the fact that Gettysburg has an amazing study abroad program. Um, one of the things that I will say is that I did kind of get to live out my study abroad dream. In 2018, I was the faculty director for the Gettysburg Study Abroad in the UK program. And so I took uh, students to London and we did a interdisciplinary seminar in London for four weeks. And then we went to Lancaster University in Lancaster, um, where we spent the remainder of the fall semester. And it was an amazing experience. I had uh, 15 undergraduate students, 15 students, uh, mostly 
juniors and a few seniors. And we got to spend this amazing experience living and studying and making our way through the city of London and really using London as a classroom for our seminar. And then we went out into a smaller kind of more English countryside town where students enrolled at Lancaster University and really got the full breadth of what a study abroad experience is where they are immersed in an, in another campus. So aside from my own experience with the study abroad and the global education program, I also have advised a number of students who have done research projects and internships while studying abroad. Um, last year, I had a student who studied in Bali and he did an independent research project, which was actually part of the study abroad in Bali program, uh, which is a requirement. And it was it, he did an amazing project looking at local culture and music and thinking about arts education and arts activism, where he was able to really get in the community um, in Bali, where he got to you know spend a semester. I had another student who was studying abroad in South Africa um, and did an internship with a... Uh, I believe with Johnson & Johnson, with the um, office in Cape Town, really working with, um, working with, with women of color there and talking to them about their experiences as underrepresented women in the workforce um, as a part of her own self-designed major. And so there's always opportunities to, to craft your study abroad experience, however, um, in whatever way makes the most sense for you. And in large part, that's due to the fact that we have so many different possibilities um, where you can look at you can start your search for where you want to study abroad based on your major, based on your interest, or based on what the things are that you want to do. You can organize it based on the world region where you want to study or based on the interests that you have. And there's a uh, in that search tool, it will help to kind of direct you and advise you toward here are all the programs that fit your criteria. And so you can create a study abroad experience to be almost anything that you want it to be. And I know um, Heather wanted to jump in. I don't I hope I didn't talk past uh, Heather's point. But yeah, no, no, not at all. I think we are the same person when it comes to advising students about study abroad, the exact same just assumptions sitting down with our students. And, and uh, you know, when I'm I meet with every single student that wants to declare in the management department. And when we sit down to make a plan for classes, it is OK. When are you going to study abroad? Not if. But when are we going to build this into your plan over the next several years? And that's, you know, the beauty of the study abroad program at Gettysburg College is there are so many opportunities and such a huge amount of students do study abroad. And, you know, most of our programs and majors and minors work really well with study abroad programs. You're able to get credit when you're abroad for the classes you're taking that count towards your major, your minor and your jet ed kind of um, requirements as well. And, and, you know, like McKinley said, there's many internship opportunities that students are able to get. I had a student who did an internship. Actually, no, that was an independent research project he did in, when he was in Argentina studying the labor unions in Argentina. Uh, and I know that, and I believe it's Berlin, students are able to do an internship program where they take you know, a class on um, organizations, but then they are assigned particular organizations that they're able to intern within the, the workplace. So a lot of opportunities there. And it's something that, yeah, I sit and encourage students because I didn't study abroad either. And I wish somebody would have pushed me to do that. And that, you know, I tell students, this is really the best chance, you know, one opportunity in your life, the, the easiest time to go live and learn in another country that is not going to be as easy once you graduate. So definitely push everybody to do that. And, and it is amazing when students come back and you see the growth and the learning that occurs. It does nothing but make you a better person when you are able to study abroad. So I believe Caroline also had some comments to make about CPS. Um, I do, but I think actually Yosef wanted, do you want to say something, Yosef? Yeah, go ahead. And then yeah, I'll, just I'll... briefly about study abroad. And that is, I wouldn't be here talking to you if I hadn't studied abroad. That pushed me more than any other semester of education that I received as a person. And so, and as an, as I had to gain an understanding of who I was, you know, it's the coming back that was really the amazing experience to my hometown and looking at everything in a different light and from a different angle. And exactly what Heather was saying is the conversations that I have with my students. Because you may be sitting here and you're, you're thinking, well, I'm going to be an athlete 
or I'm a science major, I can study abroad, or I don't have to study abroad, or maybe I shouldn't study abroad. And we're here to tell you that that's not the case. So our athletes are encouraged to study abroad. I heard a number a while ago um, from the women's lacrosse team, which is an amazing group of women, take their athletics extremely seriously. 100% of the women have studied abroad until COVID struck. So they making it work. And as far as the science majors are concerned, one of the groups that I work really closely with is our students who want to go into clinical careers. And especially when it comes to medical school applications, we work with them really closely. And there's two things I wanna tell you about that. One, these students that are, they think, okay, I can, I can go to medical school. They're generally excellent students. And when we talk to them, about what pushed them as a scholar and an intellectual during their time at Gettysburg, they typically say two things. One, I studied abroad, and I know I took all these demanding and challenging science classes, but it's study abroad that made me really appreciate what this is all about. And the other thing that comes up year after year is that they say a creative writing class where I took a class in the English department that really challenged me because it forced me to think about myself and to think about the world and communicate that. And so I love telling that story because it's, it's so emblematic of what we do, right? It is that we put it all together and it's a liberal arts and science education. And we really mean it. We really mean that and study abroad as far as I'm concerned is such an important part of that. So I just wanted to add a, uh, something to this that, that is not study abroad per se, uh, and but this is in no way meant to be a, a, a substitute for study abroad. Um, a, a lot of our students love their abroad spirit experiences so much, they're always looking for other opportunities. And some of those, for example, can come out of um, the Center for Public Service, which is actually, again, a nationally recognized program um, that the college has that has I would say primarily a social justice orientation and that a number of our students get involved with every year. Um, part of what they do is um, facilitate for students working in the community um, with different groups in the community on social justice issues. So one of our alumni years ago while she was a student started what has become the Campus Kitchen Program at Gettysburg College today. Um, which is actively involved in um, helping feed people in the community, for example. Um, but Center for Public Service also has internationally oriented programs. So for example, for the past number of years, we've sent students during the summer to Nepal, um, where they work with, again, one of our alumni started the first children's museum in Kathmandu in Nepal. And so they go and do internships there over the summer. We send lots of students every year to Nicaragua because we have a big sister city program um, in that country in Leon. Um, so a no number of students go and work um, in the community there as well. We have a number of students that go and work on the border in El Paso around border um, justice issues, for example. So there are other opportunities these actually take place, some of them over spring break, some over the fall break, um, and then a number of them take place during the summer as well. So you get funding to go do this kind of work during the summer. So there are other opportunities, and these especially have, as I said, this real social justice orientation um, element to them as well. So... Um... One of the other questions um, that has hit the chat, and we do want to encourage you guys, please don't hold back. Ask whatever is on your mind. That's what we're that's what we're here for. Um, but one of the questions that has also hit the chat is, what is it about academics at Gettysburg that we're proudest of? And so, um, for me, I'll say it's very similar to uh, what Yosef said about the ways that students are able to bring things together. Because just like Yosef hears uh, about English classes, which makes sense, have students who are wondering about the other courses that they're taking in science or the courses that they're taking in uh, organization and management, right? I hear about students 
talking about the things that they're learning in an econ class that helps to inform the way that they're thinking about the literature of the civil rights movement. Um, and it's always, a, it's always a really good experience when students are thinking critically about what they're doing all across campus and how they're bringing those ideas together and to really think about their experiences is, is being integrated. Because for me, that's the ultimate success of what a liberal arts education is meant to do, right? Is that it's not meant to have you existing in silos where you do these classes here and then you do these classes here and then you do those classes here, you check them off a list and then you keep it moving. Part of what the liberal arts ethos is and what Gettysburg is committed to doing is to getting students to think about what I did here along with what I did there and why these experiences coalesce and help to inform my perspective as a scholar, but also as a citizen of the world. The courses that I took in English and the courses that I took in health science and the experience that I did with the CPS and the study abroad that I did in my junior year, all of these things should help to inform how I am a different person when I leave Gettysburg than when I arrived. And I think that there's a real emphasis and a real desire to get students to think holistically and cohesively about their intellectual, social, cultural experiences that they have during their four years here. And so for me, even that question about what what is academically what I'm most proud of, what I'm most proud of is that the academics don't exist in a vacuum. And I think that that's something that's really intentional, um, that the faculty are intentional about doing and the students are intentional about pursuing ways that the things that happen in one class don't exist in a vacuum and don't exist in a silo, but really get to be part of a of a larger experience of growth and development and and a deepening of, of, of our students' understanding of who they are in the world. Um, so we have some other questions that have come up here. Um, I, I have to say, whoever asked that question, what about academics at Gettysburg are you the proudest of? That's a good, tough question. <laughs> um, and I was definitely thinking along about that as, as um, McKinley was talking. Um, so here's a question. What are some research opportunities offered at Gettysburg? I think that's already come up in a few contexts. For example, Yosef has talked a little bit about research opportunities in the sciences. Um, I think each of us could talk, speak to this from our particular disciplinary perspectives. Um, I would say Aside from the research you will do in courses, right, um, a number of majors also have honors programs, so you can opt if you qualify for honors to have your own year-long research project, for example. But I should also mention that we have other research opportunities that are funded over the summer, for example. So students have the opportunities to apply for um, research grants that will keep them on campus, pay them a stipend of, I think last I heard it was about five or $6,000 for eight weeks over the summer, um, subsidized housing on campus. Um, you uh, have a faculty mentor, um, and this is aside from the whole science STEM focused ones, right? These now are ones that are available to people in the social sciences and humanities. Um, so you have the opportunity to do in-depth research um, with with a faculty mentor, you know, um, with um, um, money that an alum left precisely for this purpose. So there are research opportunities of that kind. And then faculty members um, individually have their own ongoing research projects that we frequently um, ask students to be our research assistants and or I have published articles um, in journals with students as well. So there are many different kinds of research opportunities um, you know, at all levels through the college um, over the summer. I don't know if some of you want to add particular. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I, I think you covered a lot. The only thing I would add is um, independent studies. Um, but there are often independent studies. I've worked with students um, when they want to do things that there's just not a particular course that engages those questions. I've designed independent studies with students, and those have been some really, really um, enriching experiences as well. And I think Heather wanted to add, add as well. 
Yeah, so just some examples of specific student um, professor collaborations that I've seen in our department. I do research on work family work life balance and have been able to incorporate students to help me from anything from collecting the data to analyzing that data to writing up technical reports that we take back to these organizations and helping them identify sources of um, stress for their workers and how to improve stress and health and well-being for their workers. I know that um, Alice Brawley Newland, she does research on the gig economy um, and she is kind of tapping into this field of research that's relatively new. So the gig economy, looking at um, these kind of subcontract workers like um, Uber drivers and Lyft drivers and some of those types of organizations. And she's been conducting research on that that students have been involved in looking at um, trying to identify what types, what motivations it is that uh, predict what people want when they're, you know, decide to become an Uber driver. Is it because of financial need? Is it because of a social need? And right. And there's a range of different reasons. I know students have um, worked with her and presented research at um, international conferences with her. They've been able to do so. A lot of research opportunities to work one on one with professors, as well as, you know, larger class projects that we require in multiple courses within our department. Um, looks like we have another question here about the psychology department and the types of projects we would be taking part in. Yosef, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Um, so the psychology department is another large department at, at Gettysburg College. Many students um, who come to Gettysburg end up graduating as psychology majors. And the types of research and learning experiences you have in the department are extremely varied. They range from social and cultural psychology projects all the way over to um, cellular level neuroscience um, and everything in between. We also have a very active interdisciplinary neuroscience minor, uh, which is housed mostly between psychology psychology and biology departments, but if you take anatomy, human anatomy and physiology one with me this fall or next fall, uh, it, it's, it can count as part of your neuroscience minor. So, so uh, lots of different work. They're very active in our summer um, research program in the psychology department and um, it's a good department to get a, a degree in for sure. Um, I don't see any other questions at the moment in um, the chat, and I'm sort of monitoring the time here. We have a few more minutes left. If anybody has a last question or maybe not seeing that, um, we could go ahead and just if uh, each of us wants to make kind of a closing point or statement or, or you know, reflect in some way on uh, our experiences at a liberal arts college or our experiences interacting with students? I don't mind starting out there. Um, yeah, I guess just thanking you all for being here. And if you have questions, and certainly you will have additional questions as you start kind of processing this and, and thinking and, you know, visiting other places and thinking about where it would be, you know, a good fit for you, we would encourage you to reach it back out to us. Um, we're always happy to answer questions that, that come up down the road, and um, we're really excited to be able to um, talk about the opportunities here and the experiences here. So I encourage you all, apply to Gettysburg College and, you know, try to visit. I know students are still, prospective students are still visiting on campus. I see them walking around and getting tours, masked up, doing it very carefully, but still able to visit. It's a beautiful campus, certainly, but a lot of opportunities, a lot of um different majors and minors and 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 courses that uh, will do nothing but like i said before make you a better person so thank you all for being here okay um so if you feel like tonight you you know there were there were questions as heather said that um you didn't have um, interested, you will get a follow-up email tomorrow. So that's one way we can um, help follow up on those questions. Um, in terms of, I think maybe all of our email addresses will go out to everybody. So you'll have access to those as well if you want to follow up. Also, if you look at different departments and you um, go in and look at the faculty members there, 
you will often find descriptions of their particular interests. So it's also, um, and their email addresses, you can also um, follow up that way. Um, thank you again, as um, Heather said, for spending time with us this evening um, and apply. We hope you'll be for future Gettysburg College students that we see in our classes. And just make sure you plan to take an English class, a management class, a health science class, and a political science class, okay? <laughs> Have the success. Well yeah, you'll be well rounded <laughs> students. <laughs> so, right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Have for a coming. good evening. Thanks for spending time with us.